Okay, in this tutorial I will show you how to create ground with materials for our scene. Let's start with a big plane covering a large space and adjust it to the size of our building. Next let's convert it to editable poly and try to match verticals to the building. Ok, let's now just delete this polygon and we will have to add more polygons to the ground so the best option for that will be tessellation. Now I can match the ground to this smaller part of the building. And now let's just delete these polygons as well. To dance the wire of, of our ground model I will add some connex to it. And let's try to keep the size of the polygons similar. Ok, now it's, now it's a time to use paint deformation on the ground. To start modeling just click on push-pull button. First I will set a bigger brush size, so let's say 1000 cm. As you can see it's barely moving so I have to increase the push value. Ok, now I can sculpt a simple small hill in the background. Remember to st start sculpting with a low poly grid and divide mesh only if you, if you need to add some details. To reverse push-pull direction while painting, press and hold the ALT key. If the polygons look too sharp, you can always use RELAX to smooth them out. You can also reverse the sculpting process by using REVERT option. I will use, with a, I will use it with a smaller strength.
as you can see at this point I have to add some more polygons to my mesh I will add a turbo smooth modifier to it and collapse it as you can see I have to correct um, position of these these few vertices I will also add two conics here to make this area a bit more densified. And now by using paint deformation tool I will start sculpting a small hue. Let's set push value to 100 and brush size to 500 and decrease its strength to 0 This area needs denser grids, so select the polygons and use uh, mesh smooth option on them. Now we can easily sculpt for more details. I will add one more Turbo Smooth modifier and then add some finer details to my mesh. You also have to remember to adjust your brush size and its strength depending from the situation and mesh you are modeling on. Let's set push value to 20, for example, and size to 500. It looks good, but let's increase also the push value to 40. Okay, let's add a detail to our hill with this brush. You can create some small bumps. And as you can see, these bumps will, will look much better than just a smooth hill. Let's use Relax tool to smooth bumps a little bit. To add detail, uh, set, set, just, just set the smaller size of the brush around 1 or 200 will be good.
again we need to use relax to smooth those curves. Increase the brush size if you want to have a stronger relax effect. So let's switch to the top view and relax it a little bit. OK, let's now select smaller area and divide it mm, a little bit to add the less details to our mesh. Again, I'm using Mesh Smooth on selected polygons. Let's now add small details and relax the surface. Repeat the process until you're satisfied with, with the result. Okay, so now we are ready with our ground modeling. Next I will create a plane that will simulate the water level. Let's adjust it and create a nice looking puddle. I think that this this place will be okay for that. Okay, now we will move to creating materials. Let's start with our ground and we will we'll use V-Ray Blend because I want to mix two materials. First of all, let's start with a mask. Select gradient ramp and set the map channel to second because mask will have different mapping. Move the sliders on the ramp to create two solid black and white colors. Display the map in viewport and apply the UVW map modifier. Choose the second mapping channel to affect the mask. As you can see, our mask map has incorrect orientation, so we can tweak, it, tweak its settings by changing the W value angle to 90 degrees. Now we have to move our UVW gizmo to make the puddle area white and the rest of the ground black.
Now we'll try to distribute our materials depending on this map, gradient map on our surface. So let's first let's set the first material color to white and the other one red. This way we will clearly see how our material, our shader is distributed. I will make a quick render to preview. As you can see our mask works very good but the lower part needs some contrast adjustment. Let's go back to gradient map and enable the color map. Now move the upper handle higher or just increase the second parameter. Let's re-render the image to see the effect. I will actually increase the parameter even more so let's let's say 3.0 and now we are sure that our material will work correctly you can rename the materials to avoid mm, missing or swapping them later on Ok, now I will place the texture in, dif in diffuse and reflection slots. This is a matte texture downloaded from CG Textures as usually. My matte will be wet so let's make it a, big, a little bit reflective. And it seems I, I've i made a mistake. The mud material should be where the red color is. So I will just swap the slots and correct that. Another step is setting the dry ground material. I will have a simple ground diffuse map for that. Now I want to add a V-Ray Displace modifier to create more details on our terrain. Always use 2D mapping because it's a lot faster. Amount, amount will be really small, something about 1 cm seems good for me. For the displaced map I use the same map as in the fuel slot but desaturated and slightly blurred. Just copy it as an instance to displacement slot. Resolution parameter sets our quality. To get the best result you should use the same resolution as your displacement map. Setting it to 1600 is ok for this material because we won't be doing any extreme close-ups. Before making a render I want to increase reflectivity of the wet mod material. Delete reflection glossiness map and just use parameter of 0 0.8. Increase the IR number also to 6. This may seem as you can see a bit too reflective but remember that displacement creates rough surfaces and this will soften our reflections a little bit. And let's make a quick test render to see the result. We can see the difference in our materials. Reflections look really good on our wet ground. I think the wet material needs to, needs to be a little bit darker. So change the map output settings to achieve darker texture.
now it looks better and okay now it's time to create a water material and hide the plane we've created before and let's create a new shader and rename it to water dash dirty As you can see I'm using green, grey and brown shade to make my water look more natural. Let's also check translucency to imitate some subsurface scattering. Add a noise map as a bump, and the bump strength should be set really low, remember that. Use UVW map modifier as usual to place our bump correctly. Must remember not to forget use FX shadows option in the water. This is important parameter that will make shadows look much better. Okay, the ground and water are ready. In next tutorial we'll start creating the grass and vegetation.